Welcome, J Dude here. Welcome to a special episode of the Jam and Dude Show. It was 25 years ago this year that local thrash metal heroes Forced Entry released their masterpiece debut album, Uncertain Future. For the past several weeks, I have been working very hard on getting all of Forced Entry back together to sit in a room and reminisce uh, about the putting together of a Seattle music scene masterpiece. I came this close. Uh, I sat down to interview Brad Hull and Colin Matson. Uh, Tony Benjamins was scheduled to arrive and you know, I probably should have confirmed a little bit closer to the date. I'm sure that he just spaced it. And uh, we, we really missed him, and I'm really hoping to get a, a different interview with him at a later date. Um, but fun was had, and it was my first big interview, and I was so nervous that I actually forgot to introduce the guys. So I thought I'd film just a little quick prequel and just thank all the members of Forced Entry. Tony Benjamins, thank you for your emails. Thank you for your thoughts on the phone. And uh, I hope we can get some further words from you. Brad Hull, thank you. Thank you so much for sitting down and telling such wonderful, wonderful memories of the time you spent in Forced Entry. And Colin Matson. What a, what a warm and kind dude. I, I'm, I stand in awe of all three of you. And without further ado, I would like to take you down memory lane with Brad Hull and Colin Matson of Seattle Metal Legends Forced Entry. Welcome to the Jam and Dude Show. I am your host, Ben Jam and Straley, otherwise known as the Jam and Dude or LJ Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. I am here with Forced Entry, 25 years after the release of their debut album, Uncertain Future. And we're just kicking back, having some brewskis, and celebrating this Seattle event. Um, event. It, it, That's it, right. <laughs> So I wanted to start off, uh, Tony stood us up, so do uh, you, you, you guys have any words for Tony? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we'll, we'll miss you, Tony. Um, Suck. One, <laughs> started off, uh, just want to ask you guys, first of all, you, Colin, uh, what age did you start playing drums? Um, I started, like, in fifth grade in the little elementary school band playing the snare drum, and then... Um, when I was in seventh grade, I got introduced to a drum set. Where I, my parents bought me my first drum set, and so I played in the school band. And then I played in my first my first band when I was in seventh grade. Except for uh, I was the singer because <laughs> the other guy had a cooler drum set than me. Yeah, <laughs> and we, had, we practiced at his house. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I um, <laughs> so then I played in another band. Um, we did a lot of Iron Maiden stuff. Um, you know, kind of when I was in eighth, ninth grade, and that's when that's when I met. Tony Brown, I think I was in ninth grade, it was ninth or tenth grade. Yeah, it was like 15, 16, man, I mean, yeah. yeah. I was young. Yeah, yeah. I think you were like 15, I think I was like 16 when I started with Jam with Tony, and it was right after that, yeah. so you were like Because it was Kurt before me, and you guys didn't jam that long. Yeah, you had, to been, you had to have been 15 years old, probably. Yeah. Cool. And so, when did you start playing guitar? Um, I, in seventh grade, we had this, uh, the, our electives, they had an elective where you could take four quarters, uh, a guitar, metal shop, home ec, and wood shop. So I picked that one instead of just taking like half this year metal shop and whatever. And uh, so I kind of started there and learned like D strum, strum, D strum, strum, G strum, strum. And I actually I got a D minus in that class. Although I, I was I was the best player in that class, and I got a D minus because Mr. Martin didn't like my attitude apparently. And uh, so I stopped for a little bit, and then. Uh, my Uncle Pick gave me a guitar, Uncle Pick, <laughs> he played guitar, he gave me a guitar when I was about 15 and about, uh, I think it was August of when I was about 15 and a half, I was 
sitting out of the Circle K. It was a stop and go at that time, looking through a hit creator, thumbing through it. That says, little tiny ad in the classified ads, learn how to play heavy metal guitar. Send five bucks for a little free sample lesson. So I sent it, and it was a... Uh, it was the old Doug Marks metal method. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he, uh, oh, yeah. I got that, and that's basically, I mean, I got that. I was like, oh, I learned a couple licks. And I was like, yeah, and I got into that. And that's about when I learned 15 and a half when I, when I really started. I got a guitar for my birthday that and year. And obviously advanced very quickly. Yes. <laughs> Doug Marks, man, he taught me this shit real quick. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was There's good. a ding, ding, ding plug. Yeah. For <laughs> that's yeah. right. Probably still my, available out there. Well, I'm sure they are with the three-page ads the guy's got now. I mean, yeah. back then it was like, I mean, it was... I swear to God, two lines, you know, learn metal guitar, send five bucks, address, you know. It's yeah. Cool. Well, how did you guys meet? Actually, they uh, recruited me. Yeah, me and Tony used to play soccer uh, when we were young, like from, from between about age seven to 13. And then um, well, we, we'd both been playing guitar a little bit, and uh, I saw... Uh, I was talking to my buddy, it's like, oh yeah, Tony Benjamin can play uh, the electric ice, or no, there's another thing coming solo, note for note. I was like, yeah, fuck that, let's go over there and check it out. So we went over there and beat out his door, and I'm like, I hear you can play the solo, note for note. <laughs> and he goes down there, and we go down into his little basement room, and he plays, and uh, it, it wasn't note for note, it was pretty good, though. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, but the thing was, is we were like, oh, and I played a little bit for him, he was like, oh, we should start jamming together. So we, you know, we just kind of started jamming together, and we had a, like a five-piece band uh, with uh, uh, Darren Wickers was our first singer, and Tony's brother Darren Wickers sings for a band called. Uh, he's Whiskey in the Whiskey Creek. River, Whiskey, Whiskey River, River. Whiskey, Whiskey River, Whiskey River, Whiskey Creek, Whiskey Creek. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. It's the Skinner tribute. He's okay. an awesome singer, anyway. Yeah, but um, we went through a ton of people, and drummers was one of them. We but we booted Tony's uh, brother out pretty quickly, and. Tony came to me one day uh, at practice. He was like, "Oh, I met this guy, man, at a party, and Colin's gonna come jam with us." And that's basically how we got Colin. He came over and jammed. Left. Yeah, <laughs> never got, we didn't have to. We never got rid of. We didn't have to. We had another. We had another one of us. Perfect. But I mean, we went through a bunch of guys. We had. Well, you started re- off as critical condition, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, the, the the part of the the, of the actual meeting with Tony was kind of funny because we were at a party. One of my high school buddies, his parents were out of town, Kanger, whatever. And it got busted. So, you know, I was buddies with him, so we had to kick everybody out, including Tony. Uh-huh. Right? So the cops were there, and, and uh, tr- the guy was named Travis, and, and he's like, nobody's coming back in, man. If my parents find out, we're all fucking screwed, you know, and all this. And, and so I'm sitting there in the kitchen, you know, the keg's still in the kitchen. We hit it from the cops, and I'm pouring a beer, and up to the kitchen window comes Tony with this look on his face, like, <laughs> and I come back in, I'm like, go to the slider, like, yeah, come on in, dude. So then, and that's how I met him. Nice, that's <laughs> rad. I never even do that. Yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> did you guys ever play any shows as Critical Condition at that time? We or? played a talent show at Linwood High School. Linwood High School. <laughs> I think we played your uh, um, we played a Halloween party at your in your parents' garage. Yeah. Yeah, we had a yeah. We played a couple. I mean, we used to have actually pretty big shows in our band room. Right? Yeah. I mean, we would pack you know eighty people in a room. 15 by 20. 15 by 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there'd be people, you know, outside the door. Just, it, it was, yeah, we were Tony's fortunate. parents were really cool. They were really cool. And we lived in, we lived in Mount Lake Terrace, but they had five acres. So it's Snohomish County zoned. So the Terrace cops couldn't come knock down and tell us to stop. They had to get a sorry, Snohomish County Sheriff out there. Right. The so Terrace cops fucking, were, they were helpless. Yeah, yeah. They, they were cars up and down the road. They could bitch to those people, you know. But they couldn't actually come down, and even though they did a couple times, they're like, "Oh, you guys gotta keep it down." But I mean, they were cool, and they they were helping us, just like you said. Yeah, yeah they couldn't they couldn't do anything. Well, that was we're, like it's a, like we're an island of Snohomish County, right up smack dab in the middle of Mount Lake Terrace. Yeah.